I have spent so much time trying to analyze the provider variants on the open router, specifically on Quinn 3 Coder. I'm also doing this on Kimi K2. And I went into this with a couple theories. The first is, first off, I know that there is huge provider variants and I felt like I had a way, or I felt like I could actually measure this using native tool calling. So my theory was that I could easily see it. My second theory is that if you're quantized, FP4, for example, you're going to perform worse than FP8, which FP8 may even perform worse than if there is an FP16 or a full precision one. The way I'm actually doing this is I have a testing harness that I put together. You can see the list of providers that I have here that I was actually testing. Um, I have a series of tool definitions, quite a lot of them. The tool definitions aren't coding related. My goal here was not to test coding, it's to test native tool calling. And then you can see that when you execute the tool, it's very simply just returning dummy data. It doesn't actually matter that much. But here's an example of kind of a mid-tier test that I was doing. You can see here, I should get a tool call for get weather. I should get a tool call for converting currency. I should get a search for hotels. I know this may seem simplistic, but it actually, in my opinion, is a really interesting way to test these chains of tool calls, right? So if my original thing is, hey, we're expanding our business globally, start by checking flights from New York to Tokyo. The first prompt, the first tool call rather, should be to go do that check flights. And then we should be able to measure, does all of these tool calls actually happen as well? And you can kind of see here, I go a lot longer. This isn't even all of them, it keeps going. So I try to build this in such a way that I can deterministically figure out if the right tool calls are being done and if the parameters and the format of the tool call is correct. So my theory was that it was going to be easy to tell. Now, the challenge that I ran into is the variance in the providers is harder to measure than I anticipated. And there's several reasons for it. The first is reliability. A lot of these, look, take a look at hyper, hyperbolic. They, and this isn't the only one. There are some that are just constantly up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I just can't actually test that very well. And in fact, let me go ahead and show you a test from Deep Infra because we're going to talk about them a lot. Deep Infra, I love them. They work so good when I'm not getting an open router API error, which I don't understand why it'll like open our API or open router API error and then immediately work on the next one. Notice these fails. This is just me logging uh, that the scenario failed because it made four tool calls. I expected three, et cetera. And that it just makes it very difficult for me to judge that. So take everything that I'm talking about here as data points for yourself to hopefully be able to maybe get closer to finding the configuration that's good for you but also maybe to bring some attention to just the wild variance that's out there in just selecting Quinn 3 Coder on Open Router because it's, it's more complicated than I think any normal person would ever understand. So one other thing to call out is Cerebrus. I love Cerebrus. I'm paying the $50 a month for their Cerebrus code plan currently. They have a higher input price uh, than say like Deep M for FP4, like check out this price. 30 cents. Remember, most of our cost is on the input price. I'm actually a really big fan of what Deep Infra FP4 is doing. And I'll show you why, even though the API errors throw their scores down the tube a little bit, when it works, it works so good. Cerebrus FP8, on the other hand, has a lower context window than everyone else. So if you're selecting the fastest provider and you get Cerebrus FP8, you're going to get a smaller context window but you're also going to get rate limited, which is also a pain in the butt. So let's take a look at the smoke test results. I know this may not make a lot of sense to you, but I wanted to actually have ground myself a little bit. Five tests in root code, five tests in open code, green, all 10 pass. If it's orange, it means one of the uh, tools failed. And to be totally honest with you, every one of the one that failed was open code. So open code uses native tool calling whereas root code uses prompt-based tool calling. I've talked about that a lot in other videos. Cerebrus, it basically was rate limited. So this it's unfortunate, but I literally could not complete my smoke test 
because I was API rate limited. Fala, Targon, together, all three of these ended up hitting API errors in both root code and in open code, so those failed. Typically, what would happen in the ones that I failed here um, in open code was it would just stop working. It would stop mid-chain. Sometimes it would actually say API error in the actual open code message, but most of the times that it would just like be working, okay, we're going to go create the directory, blah just done it just like no response back from the api for whatever reason it would die now let's take a look at the tps results again i'm so sad that cerebrus has had so rate limited i don't know if i've just hammered it so much or not but i can't even complete you know 120,000 tokens or whatever i'm generating it's typically doing 60,000 and then another 60,000 so yeah so i don't know i'm doing you know, 100,000-ish tokens, and I could never complete that with Cerebrus because of the rate limited. Deep Infra, incredibly fast. Fireworks, incredibly fast. Atlas Cloud, incredibly fast. So all four of these are really good. And I would even say, like, any of these over 80 actually are pretty good as well. Um, so I was able to get Paracel together, Targon, and Fala to actually complete the TPS result even though they did actually end up failing the smoke test. So if we start kind of extrapolating this out, we have Alibaba, Shoot, Deep Emperor, and Fireworks. We really are getting down on the providers that we could actually use if you wanted to use open code. If you want to use the open code, you really only have these four options currently. Uh, I know some providers are working on updating things, and I hope they do because I think that will make a huge difference. Tool Recall. This is one, again, I kind of showed how I'm doing the testing. I think it's very important for you to understand that. But you can imagine how easy it is with the way I'm doing it to understand what tool should be called. So if it's 51.5%, which is what Deep Infra FP4 is, that means it called the tool that it was supposed to 52% of the time. The best score was Atlas Cloud at 76.3, Alibaba Open Source at 75.7. I would love if there's someone that knows anyone at Atlas Cloud or could actually look into this. Like Atlas Cloud consistently scores very high, but didn't work in open code. So I don't understand it. Maybe it's like a prompt template thing or some weird API error. And in that particular one, it would always say API error. So there's something going on there with Atlas Cloud in open code, but it works great with native function calling. So there's something going on there anyway. I won't belabor that a little bit, but you can kind of see here, I had AI sort of explain my methodology behind it. But you know, if it if if it looks like I'm detecting, asking about weather, flights, calculations, stock market, whatever, I have a ton of tests or a ton of tool calls. It goes and it, it, it basically builds like a list of tools that should be called. And then it sees what those are actually called. And then how close to 100% can we actually get based on this, deterministic method of figuring out what tool call should happen and then letting the AI non-deterministically call. So GMI Cloud finished very low. Paracel finished very low. Cerebrus, again, remember, Cerebrus is weight rate limited. So some of these scores actually get skewed, unfortunately, um, at scale. So the initial test that I released on X, for example, had Cerebrus very high and those were smaller, like those tests were a lot smaller. I wasn't being rate limited. Cerebrus would be high if I wasn't being rate limited, just to be very clear. Like when the tests that actually complete, it does incredibly good at it. But I'm unfortunately, I can't give that to them because of the rate limiting issues that I get there. Now, this is going to get a little bit more noisy here. And you can kind of see my color scale here. If it's green, Basically, my tests were able to be done with no rate limits, no API errors. If it's orange, you can you know there are API errors, so the, the scores are going to be off, right? I'm only measuring partial. It's unfortunate, but I don't know a better way to do that. So really, the green ones are the only ones that are fully complete, every test done, and you can kind of get a, get a take on that. This is currently sorted by param accuracy, which when I started this test was what I thought was going to be the most important metric. But I've actually come to believe that I think tool recall might actually be more important at this point. Param accuracy and tool recall, maybe in combination. And if it's like this little yellow color, whatever color, it's coming through weird on the video. 
Um, these are rate limited. They hit rate limit, so they did not finish as well. And again, I did have fallback. So every time I'd hit a rate limit, I'd wait 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 45 seconds, and it would still be rate limited. I eventually gave up go to the next scenario, try it again. That's why it took so long to actually run these things because I was trying to handle all of these cases. So let's take a look at these scores here. The higher preamp accuracy, the better. Now, preamp accuracy is all about, you know, if you are passing in a parameter, is it of the right type? Is it formatted correctly? So you want this as close to 100 as possible. Again, we can't really count this 100 because of the API errors that were actually being hit there. But 99.7, 96.8, all of these are really, really good. Deep Infra actually does really good, but it gets messed up by the API errors that happen. In fact, what I was thinking about, and this may just seem counterintuitive, but with how cheap Deep Infra is, for how well it works when it works, I would probably put this as my number one provider let open router handle the failures for me by then passing it down to cerebrus because i also love cerebrus and that works well and could i get away with running deep infra and cerebrus bouncing back and forth between each other when i'm rate limited and or hitting api errors and then if i did need a third and you're okay with it i would maybe put in like alibaba um Open, uh, again, I would choose Atlas Cloud, but I couldn't get that one to work in open code. So even though it does work well with tool calling, so that's just one that I want to do a little bit more digging into if I get time. But if you can get Atlas Cloud to actually work for you in open code, maybe there's an update somewhere. I'd, I'd recommend that. It's scoring incredibly good. Now, the other thing that I would say on this is like for you, you've got to make your decision based on what tool you're using. And you also need to make your decision based on the cost and the data retention policy. Shoots, for example, a lot of people I know actually use Shoots. And if you don't care about the data retention policy, man, go ahead and use that. It scored well. And honestly, if you had asked me before I started this how well I thought it did, I wouldn't have put it as high as, uh, as it ended up scoring here. It does great on recall. It's F1 score, which is kind of a combination of precision and recall. Is I would say kind of like right about average. Whereas Alibaba and Atlas Cloud, you know, in the 55. So I guess this would be kind of the baseline that we actually want to hit here on the F1. So I am so curious what all of you guys think. I know I've gone on quite a while, talked a lot about this on X. I feel like I've gone down just a huge rabbit hole on analyzing these providers. And it's put me in a situation where I think my whole theory, if I go back to the very beginning here, has changed pretty drastically. For one, I mean, I do know that this is kind of true, but it's not as true as I thought it was. What is actually the bigger problem is honestly the provider reliability, the uptime, the sporadic API errors you get, even when, even when, like it'll be green in open router. I'll go check in green in open router. And then I'll be uh, going up and working on, let's say, Deep Infra. And all of a sudden, it'll be like, oh, there's no endpoint found anymore. And then I, I, you can kind of see how I actually do some retries here, retries, retries. And then all of a sudden, it'll start working again. So these like little sporadic spikes that happen. Now, is that Deep Infra's fault? I don't know. Is that Open Router's fault? I also don't know. So... Maybe that gets ironed out a little bit and it will help out with some of this testing, to be honest, because I need to be able to reliably hit deep infra without that stuff happening. Even, you know, trying to do this delayed um, retries, I couldn't get it to actually recover. And it happens on all of them. Fala, Together, Hyperbolic, uh, Paracel had that some. So it's just, it's a tough thing to measure. I think that the way we're going, the way I'm going about it, I think is the right way. Although I'm always looking for feedback on that. I do plan to open source this because I would love to have other people put eyes on it and help me figure this out. My main objective though, is for us to be able to have kind of a list of providers that we would recommend. And what's weird about this is because of the API errors, I can't get valid scores in a lot of these 
that I think would score a lot higher if that wasn't the case. And I ran this over multiple days and very consistently over three days, I had the same thing happen with Deep Infra. Is it something I'm doing wrong? I don't think so because these work fine. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Can you just tell me that I'm also not imagining it, that this is actually a bit of a mess and there's a much more to unwind here than what I've even be able to do, like even after pumping hundreds of dollars into testing this? Anyway, I appreciate you all so much. I hope this has been informative and at least kind of opened up everyone on the kind of the landscape of how noisy and messy the provider variance actually is on open router. And I don't think it's open router's fault at all. I think they're doing the best they possibly can. And I also think they've got a big challenge ahead of them to actually try to resolve this. All right, everyone, until next time, take care.